Welcome to the Beam, where curiosity meets conversations, taking us a step further into the future we desire. I'm Sunas Nathaniel, and today on the show, we're going to be looking at Nigeria's cancer crisis and its impact on adolescents and the young adults. But before we get straight into that, we're just going to be going to a quick look at some of the major trends and other social media uh, platforms and all that has been going around social media just before we come back and get into this very, very important issue. Don't go away. Stay with us. In a week that saw spectacular sporting action, especially within the Premier League, Chelsea was one team on the leaps of many. From a magical return against Manchester United to a sloppy draw at the Bramall Lane, the wavy form of the team continues to make fans question what really the future holds for the Blues. Staying in England, Manchester United held Liverpool to a 2-2 draw at Old Trafford and an Arsenal a goal difference lead over the Reds on the table, even as the race for the title gets more intense with just one point standing between the Gunners and Manchester City who are currently third. from England, we move to Italy where we see a real flying header by Victor Osimhen, leaving tongues wagging as many speak of the risk and courage it took for the African Footballer of the Year to hang in the air just to get Napoli back into the game against Monza, ultimately setting the tone for a win. Thanks for staying with us and welcome to those who might just be joining us. Uh, the year 2024 marks the 76th anniversary of the World Health Organization. And the theme for this year is My Health, My Right. Uh, April, that Sunday, April 7th, was the World Health Day. And it's on this premise that we're going to be discussing today Nigeria's cancer crisis and its impact on youths and adolescents. Uh, available data suggests uh, that in the U.S., about 85,000 adolescents and young adults between the ages of 15 and 39 were diagnosed with uh, cancer in 2023. In Nigeria, as of 2020, at least 260,000 individuals were diagnosed with cancer. However, today, one key element is missing from all that we have said, and that is the element of how much of that population of those who have cancer are within the ages of 15 and 39. How much of that population is the youth population, the adolescents and young adults? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Joining me via Zoom today to speak to this question and answer several others is none other than Professor Chinomso Wuzuchi. He's a professor of nursing and oncology and he's a cancer care advocate and currently teaches advanced pathophysiology and adult health care at the Kinsaw State University in Georgia. Professor, it's a delight to have you joining us remotely. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, let's get right into it because it's a very critical uh, situation. It's a very important discourse, especially because the youth population is almost like nobody's really tending to them. So I'm going to ask you, every year we have over 120,000 cancer cases uh, that are diagnosed in, you know, in Nigeria per se. Narrowing it down, what kind of cancer really affects, you know, the demographic we're looking at today? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. Um, like you mentioned, cancer is becoming a major public health um, issue globally and also in Nigeria. Uh, but um, over the years, we've paid attention to cancers of the children and also the older adults. But now we are now redirecting our attention to the cancers affecting um, adolescents and um, young adults, what we call the higher cancers. Specifically, um, cancers um, such as the leukemia, specifically the acute uh, lymphoblastic and the acute um, uh, myeloid leukemia, these are the major cancers affecting um, this age population. Also, um, we have uh, testicular cancers, you know, um, uh, young uh, adults and adolescents, that is where we have the highest peak of the incidence of testicular cancers. And then uh, the bone marrow, um, bone um, cancers such as um, osteosarcoma. Um, um, now, recently, cervical cancer is becoming an issue among this population. 
Uh, luckily, uh, they've just uh, rolled out uh, cervical cancer screening, but it's still a major challenge among this population. And then finally, I would say um, before now, uh, colorectal cancer was a cancer of the older people, but now the World Health Organization and other um, healthcare agencies have seen that it's important to lower that age range because we've seen younger adults and even um, uh, adolescents who come down with colorectal cancers. And that's why one of my let, research... Let, let, me, um, let, me just, you know, let me just inject there. What, what is colorectal cancer? It's the cancer that affects the, the colon, colon and the rectum, our gastrointestinal mm. system. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So it, it involves, um, you know, uh, it starts with a polyps and it increases into um, a major tumor. Uh, before now, we used to screen the elderly from 50 years and above, but now we've seen cases of um, dyscloretal cancers among younger um, generations, such as people of 30, um, 35. I've taken care of a patient who had colorectal cancer at the age of 19, mm -hmm. and eventually the prognosis was very bad, and he ended up in hospice care. So wow. these are the cancers that are prevalent among um, adolescents and young adults. All right, let's, let's, let's bring it back home a bit. In, in your research, how accessible would you say is, uh, is cancer screening and diagnostic you know, services uh, back home in your research? Well, um, I would say um, Nigeria needs a lot of, um, you know, to do more efforts in the improving uh, access to uh, cancer screening and treatment. Like the team of this year's WHO uh, World Health Day, which says um, uh, uh, my health, um, you know, who says that what our health is in our hands, okay? So everybody needs to have access to good, um, you know, cancer, cancer screening. Everybody needs to have access to treatment. But in Nigeria, that is not, um, you know, what we see uh, recently. There's no affordability. You know, for example, uh, just mammogram, which is, um, you know, one of the key um, screening measures for breast cancer, yeah. is very expensive. It's about 25,000 or even more. Now, tell me how many people would have that amount of money just to spend on screening? And if they are tested positive, then they have to go for a uh, major treatment. Mm. Unfortunately, if uh, our people cannot afford these screening measures, now tell me, are they able to afford treatment? This is one of the major problems we have when it comes to accessibility uh, and affordability of uh, cancer screening services. All right. Uh, you, 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 have, you have gone into that um, social economic aspect of things when it comes to finances and all that. Uh, are there some cultural and societal barriers also, you know, that hinder the awareness and prevention of this treatment, you know, when it comes to cancer within the age range? And in answering that, I also want you to, to answer more about, tell us more about the gaps that exist within the healthcare system and how to really deal with this age group we're talking about. Yeah, thank you for asking this very important question. Now, uh, in my research over the years, um, I, I found out that there are so many socioeconomic and, and um, uh, socioeconomic factors that serve as sabotage to the efforts in fighting cancer, especially in Nigeria. Uh, the first, like I mentioned earlier, is poverty. Poverty is the major sabotage against um, our fight against cancer. And then um, also um, cultural practices. There are so many cultural practices that hinder our, our efforts as healthcare professionals. For example, during my research, I found out that, um, you know, uh, people, when they have breast cancer, especially the younger ones, we feel uh, cancers in the younger ones are, um, you know, associated with uh, maybe an evil spirit or associated with, um, uh, you know, uh, a disease from a, a, an evil person or maybe somebody from the village, like, like we say it in Nigeria. And instead of people coming, going to the hospital, for screening and treatment, they would rather go to the, uh, you know, spiritualist or go to the uh, churches or mosques for prayers. And at the end of the day, when the cancer has metastasized, they come to the hospital where eventually nothing much can be done. And when you, when you uh, do a little bit, they die. And people keep hearing that, oh, this person has gone to the hospital and died. They feel, you know, even during my research, some uh, people told me that the hospital was a dead zone mm. when it comes to cancer. Yes, so these are because of some sociocultural factors. And again, lack of communication, both within the family and externally. For example, we know that breast cancer, which is still common among um, you know, young adults and adolescents, you know, it runs in family. There's family predisposition 
when it comes to breast cancer. Now, if it, somebody's uh, mother died of breast cancer, sometimes the family would not know. Other people, the children would not know that the woman died of cancer because of the stigma associated with cancer. And because if the kids know, they would go for screening or take, uh, you know, proactive measures to prevent these things. So these are the things, you know, in my research, I'm trying to see how we can change the narrative when it comes to those sociocultural uh, factors. And, and then um, uh, people smoke a lot. They don't know the implications. They smoke, take alcohol, and even sedentary lifestyle. Mm. You see, as, it's as simple as, you know, enjoying yourself smoking and drinking, they have negative implications. All and right. these are well, the things well, we well, see. I think we're going to come to that point where you would have to give us this just, you know, some of how this uh, lifestyle can affect, you know, and cause come about cancer and all the rest. But, but let, let us ask you, it's a world in which artificial intelligence is playing a key role right now. What, what key role is AI playing over there that we can now implement, you know, down here in, in the fight against cancer? Well, AI, it's uh, making things easier for our patients, especially here in the United States. Um, now we make use of AI, even in uh, medical diagnosis. When we uh, send patients for um, scan medical imaging, um, you know, we use AI algorithms to read some of these imaging to give precise diagnosis. And this makes you know, things easier and also promotes early diagnosis. Even when we take some uh, samples, uh, pathologists and then um, histologists, when they take samples, when they run the samples, take it for histologic tests, these things are the uh, AI algorithms are also used to interpret these tests and make it more specific and uh, accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, there are human errors, but AI uh, is more accurate than what um, you know uh, regular human beings do. And then, in the, in the term, in terms of genomics or uh, genetic texting, you know, we um, use AI to pre uh, you know predict the uh, possibility for someone to have uh, cancer later on. Yeah. Okay. And then um, finally, virtual consultation. We use AI to consult with people instead of them coming to the hospital who can reach out uh, to them using AI to answer some of their questions. So these are uh, interesting things uh, AI can do to help us um, improve uh, the fight against cancer. Yeah, it's interesting that you have said that. Just in, a, in one minute, just like in one minute, tell us about how many oncologists per se we have in Nigeria that are in, in this fight against cancer, especially within that demography? Uh, we have um, the oncology uh, population we have, it's um, very, very little compared to the, um, the, the number of cancers that we have on daily basis. You know, um, it's even more worrisome that we don't even have um, nurses that are specialized in oncology. We just have only one school of nursing that uh, train people for oncology nursing, which is, um, which is unacceptable. So I think um, uh, these are areas that Nigeria can do better. Let's train people, not just pediatric um, oncologists or general oncologists, let's have specialized oncologists that are uh, you know, trained to manage the, um, you know, the complexities and the technicalities involved in caring for adolescents and younger adults who have cancer. All right. Let's speak to where we can leverage technology, you know, to, hear, to help this demographic that we're looking at right now. How can technology come into play? How much do we have and how much more do we need? All right. Um, technology can be a game changer and it has actually proven so globally. So Nigeria should start thinking um, in that direction also. Uh, for example, just imagine if... Um, uh, you know, uh, people have access to their phones and uh, they get, um, you know, cancer information translated into their, uh, you know, uh, local languages. That will improve the, uh, you know, the level of awareness that people in this uh, demographic, uh, you know, will have regarding cancers. You know, when they see, when they see cancer, when they see information translated directly to their languages, it makes things easier. And they will have that ownership. It will be as if the message was directed to them. So that can actually improve uh, the, the um, you know, awareness and knowledge about, um, you know, even symptoms of cancers and the, even the tendency for people to uh, go for cancer screening. And then um, um, in recent times, we have um, what we call um, telehealth or telenursing uh, because I'm a nurse by profession. Telenursing is uh, where we use technology and take care of patients without necessarily having to be with them. Telehealth, we use, um, you know, some digital tools, uh, digital uh, tools to converse with people in remote areas, 
okay, so that we can uh, know their symptoms, we can understand what they're going through, and if it, refer if it involves referral, we refer immediately. Now, one of the major problems we have is it takes a long time to refer, you know, from diagnosis, from, you know, things like that, but we can leverage on this technology and then to, um, you know, help these people. The next thing is um, robotic surgery. You know, if Nigeria would get to that level, that would also make life easy. When we use robotics to, uh, you know, and, and that's what we call precision in uh, precision surgery in, um, you know, in cancer care, we go straight to the tumor, uh, you know, size the tumor and then remove them. Okay, remove the tumors and uh, the person goes, um, you know, take other treatments and becomes fine. So uh, these are the areas that I feel we should be able to improve, uh, you know, um, leveraging on technology, available technology, and also improve on uh, new ones, um, you know, to care for people who have cancer within this age, age group. All right. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's very insightful. Earlier on, you were speaking about lifestyle and dieting and all that. Uh, can you give us like a, a quick tips on how one could stay you know, for, fight this, this whole cancer thing and stay healthy uh, as to not develop cancer, perhaps, you know, back home here in Nigeria. Are there some tips you, you want to give us right now? Uh, absolutely. Um, well, sometimes cancer can come from nowhere. So I need to uh, set that record. Clear that, yes. You know, sometimes people do everything and they still end up having cancer. Sometimes people are predisposed to some of these risk factors that, that I will mention, but they may not have cancer. So it depends on individual basis and their genetic makeup. But generally, we encourage people to eat healthy. Eating healthy will make you, you have enough vitamins, you have enough um, proteins and minerals. And some of these um, uh, minerals, they, are, they, they, they prevent cancer cells from forming. Because cancers, they start at our normal cells until something happens, they start mutating uncontrollably. So when we eat well, it helps to prevent, um, the, we have anti antioxidants that suppress um, tumor growth mm -hmm. in our body system. Mm -hmm. And then avoiding uh, the use of alcohol or smoking, and then um, encourage exercise. When we exercise, obesity level will reduce because there are so many cancers that are associated with obesity. And then, um, you know, um, going for screening on a regular basis. We screen because um, uh, somebody, uh, one of my, um, you know, an acquaintance just went for a reg just random screening. A routine check. Nothing was wrong with her. And then she was found to have cancer. So if she had not gone for that screening, no, no symptoms, no, no, no manifestations, but eventually she had cancer. So when we go for regular screening, that will also make us um, to know when we have any um, abnormalities in our body system. All right. I, I, if, if, if I lost, just before I let you go, I want you to, if you were back here in Nigeria, what's one thing you would want to set up right now as to help these young people we're talking about, the ages between 15 and 39, what's one thing that can really help them now when it comes to the fight against cancer? Well, uh, within this age range, I would say the first thing would be um, maybe to advocate for, um, you know, the uh, implementation of uh, cancer information into the curriculum in our secondary and even university levels, because cancer is becoming a major problem mm. in Nigeria. So by the time we put this uh, information into the curriculum and we implement them, it makes them have this awareness at an early age. So before they even have, um, you know, uh, the problem, they will have already detected it because they know the symptoms. And then, uh, you know, to change um, the narrative with regard to um, some cultural or some misperceptions about cancer. You know, for example, somebody cannot freely tell uh, the mother that they have testicular cancer mm. because the Texas is associated with um, the male reproductive part. Mm. But if we're able to, you know, uh, create more awareness, people will be free to communicate their health challenges and they seek help immediately. And then uh, also promotes the training, specialized training for um, healthcare professionals within this age, um, you know, range mm -hmm. that will take care of people within this age range, and um, you know, who want to find their their unique um, um, uh, unique problems, unique challenges, and then determine age specific uh, interventions that will promote um, you know early diagnosis and early treatment uh -huh. for their cancers. All right, yeah, Dr. Wozichi, thank you very much for taking our time to give us this insightful uh, interview, this information. It's very key that people start to understand uh, that we have the danger of Christ, uh, of cancer uh, with us at this moment. Thank you very much. It's thank a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. All right, now. Okay, that's our time today on the program.
uh, please feel free to reach out if you have some more questions as regards cancer care, especially as it relates to Nigeria today, while looking at international best practices. I'm Sunes Nathaniel, and until we meet same time next week, let's not forget that Nigeria's youth population is the true future, and if health be wealth, then all must be put in place to keep the future healthy. Bye for now. This week, we begin our most viewed video countdown with a clip in which members of the State Assembly in River State threatened to renew impeachment proceedings against Governor Tim Fubara. And that we swore an oath of allegiance to the Constitution to do the needful, including the impeachment of the governor, as a last resort. So if it becomes a last resort in accordance with the law, we will not hesitate to do so because no individual is bigger than River State, including the governor. We assure the people of River State that we remain undeterred in our service to our fatherland and no number of threats, including those of violence against us, just like the attack the Speaker's residence will make us abandon our constitutional mandate to make laws for the good governance of our dear state. Number four on the list is a video in which the FCT Minister Nyesun Wiki speaks to newsmen regarding the fight against land grabbing in the Federal Capital Territory, as well as the ongoing feud between himself and the Governor of River State. Our third placed video this week is a clip in which security operatives raged the camp of suspected members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and its military wing, the Eastern Security Network. Coming in in second place on the top most viewed videos countdown is a clip in which newly elected president of Senegal, Diomaye Faye, appoints his great ally, Osmani Sanko, to serve as prime minister of the nation. And coming tops on our most viewed videos list is an interview in which presidential candidate of the African Action Congress and rights activist Omoyele Shawari says Nigerian youths must learn from Senegal's young president and demand more of themselves than to be mere personal assistance to all the politicians in Nigeria. The question is, what are young people doing? That's the question. And young people are doing what I call tag along, you know. They are more interested in becoming, uh, you know, senior uh, special assistants to uh, governors or senators. They don't, I have not seen that clear aspiration on, on the part of our young people to go and become the leaders of their country. And most of the time, it's these young people that are pulling down. The few young people who are courageous enough to say it is time to turn the corner.